watercolor wizards, Hajer here. Today we'll be doing a master study by JC Lion Decker with some original touches. As usual, art blog sketches, deconstructed painting posts, Q&As, and art gift rewards are available for my patrons on Patreon. So I'll be using my Creative Aqua Sticks as a gouache paint again. Just break pieces of the sticks and put them in a palette, add water, and they can be used like an opaque watercolor or gouache. Joseph Christian Lion Decker innovated and made popular many holiday icons, from homecoming to Thanksgiving turkey, flowers for Mother's Day, New Year's babies, and many more. Here we're doing a study of one of his iconic New Year's babies. I discuss how to keep master studies fresh and exciting and give examples of various types of master studies on a Patreon art blog post. In the case of this Lion Decker baby, it's a modified study where I've tweaked him a bit for color changes and traded out some of his props like a pencil instead of a telescope and so on. I also use gouache and not oil like Lion Decker did, but I am trying to imitate the look and style of oil. Starting out with the wizard's hat, I use wet into wet for color deposits so I can get some blooms and also some wet on dry blending. I'm just using yellow and the ochre colors here and they give a really nice illusion of shiny star and moon fabric. I chose this baby because it was New Year's and also because this particular one was a wizard baby and my channel is called Watercolor and Wizardry so it seemed really appropriate. Also the original version by Lion Decker has a little elephant pedestal for the crystal ball and a tasseled pillow and along with his crescent and starry hat he really marks this baby as a little sultan's vizier or astrologer wizard and I thought that was even cuter because my parents background is from that part of the world so anything with an Arabian Nights fairy tale theme is always interesting to me. So I've mixed white into the brown aqua color stick just to make a base skin tone. Eventually I'll use white with red, orange, and brown to make pink, peach, tan, and brown colors to tile in various skin areas. And yeah, this is a tiling piece, not a grisaille where I did the gray value layer first. It goes quicker with tiles, but there is no locked in darker color underneath with the rendering done clearly, so it can be trickier. It just means I'll have to build facial features and details and shadows on top later, and they're not underneath and made clear for me already. It's good to do tiling sometimes, just like it's good to do grisaille sometimes. It keeps your brain flexible to do different types of painting methods. And I put in smaller tiles and various skin mixes to start building up the facial planes, pink for a rounded cheek, yellow for the forehead, red or small tiles for the nose eye area indentation and brown for the creases and eye and eyebrow and lock of hair. Lion Decker had such a structured way of applying brush strokes so he's a natural to practice color tiles with. Okay, so his hat I did in a magical shade of violet rather than the original black. It looks more magical and colorful and it's also the complement to the yellow in the hat. So it really sets off the moon and stars. Because gouache is opaque, I can use the violet to cover up and neaten edges in the hat shapes. I don't have to be exact with the yellow before as it's not transparent paint so it can be fixed continually. And I have lots of nice texture showing in the purple and I can even that out with a second opaque layer of purple if I want. But I like here how the uneven even purple texture sort of implies a velvet fabric in the hat, so I've left it alone for now. I will say that the babies in Lion Decker's pieces are a little too structured and rubbery looking to be the cutest babies. For more natural, adorable babies, Jesse Wilcox Smith would probably be a better Golden Age illustrator to study. JC Lion Decker did men best. He had the most stunning gentleman in crisp, amazing attire, and his arrow collar man actually became an iconic fictional American male, the way that Charles Dana Gibson's Gibson Girl became a fictional American female icon. And my version of the crystal ball is larger and floating in the air and not sitting on an elephant pedestal. I omitted a lot of the frou-frou decor under and behind the baby actually since I'm just doing a Lion Decker study and not a replica. So I'm free to leave things out. It's just a learning experience that lets me observe Lion Decker's style and artistic decisions. So apart from the levitating ball, I can further the magical mood by putting a washi galaxy inside of it. And that's just wet into wet bleeds of blue and violet over the pill 
pale blue local stain for that ball. Later when it dried, I spattered some white stars into it with a brush. And that makes a nice, quick, easy galaxy. The pencil was another original addition, perfect for an art channel. I was gonna do a paintbrush, but the pencil was prettier under his arm. And if it's not a misty, bloomy texture area, in most other cases, gouache is applied wet on dry, if an oil or acrylic painting look is what we're aiming for, which is definitely the case for a line decker piece. The wet on dry makes it easier to control rendering and edges for forms, and so the pencil, the skin, the face, the shirt were all done wet on dry. And I blended edges with an almost dry brush or more paint, otherwise the gouache will get back bleeds and not look like oil paint at all. No one ever told me this, I never read it anywhere, I just had to figure out myself the hard way. And that's very different to watercolor where glazing allows you to blend edges with water and add water over other colors all the time. I kept the pencil pretty simple, just the major planes and values, and it results in a decently realistic pencil. It catches the reflective values in the top and also the wood grain in the tip. And there's really something tasty about an old school pencil with a super sharp tip and new pink eraser. Even though I can't say I've had a pencil like this probably since elementary school. It's been mechanical pencils for most of my life actually. So I guess I just have wood pencil nostalgia. So the arm and hand is done with the same tiling and edge blending of various skin tones. Pink, peach, whitish tan, tan, and brown. The outlines are not uniform, they have lots of lost and found edges. This is more wet on dry, exactly what you'd want for this type of detail. This is not loose and washy. It's tight and structured, and it has that lovely posing poster magazine cover look. I loved a lot of this stuff even before I discovered Line Decker, so it was a real thrill to find an old genius artist who likes many of the same style decisions that I do. Then again, there's probably very few people out there who would disagree with Line Decker's amazing decisions. His mastery of a great composition extends to the rhythm and flow of his layout. Here I can see the baby has a dynamic pose to capture interest, and also there's a repeated circular theme to make the layout very musical. If you look at the original piece, you see a circular baby head, circular baby upper arm and knee shape. Also there are circles in the crystal ball and circles and ellipses in the telescope and more circles in the background border. And even the curving circular border in the background is reflected in the crystal ball. There's also the crescent curving in the hat. So there's a lot of curving shapes everywhere. Ironically, despite being the definer of such icons and holiday images, and somebody with such an amazing style, Line Decker was actually eclipsed in his own life by an artist he mentored, and that was Norman Rockwell. And Rockwell ended up stealing everything from Line Decker, his art style, his connections, and eventually his very job and all of his fame. And so Line Decker was largely forgotten by the public for many decades. To me, when I compare the two artists, not only is it obvious that Norman Rockwell stole all of the style trademarks in his own art from Line Decker, Decker. It's also obvious that Line Decker was the better artist. He was more brave, he made more stunning and courageous stylistic decisions. Rockwell had a much more sort of watered down, saccharine Americana type look in comparison. And along with Alphonse, Muha, and Dulac, Line Decker will always be like a cherished uncle to me, someone whose influence and style has affected many artists I grew up seeing, like comic book illustrator Alex Ross, who's been highly influenced by Line Decker. I discovered that I like Line Decker and all the other Golden Age illustrators better than I like any of the artists I had seen previously from modern decades. So the shirt is also wet on dry with edge blended tiles and I chose to make it more green than yellow for a bit more color pop. And again, lost and found outlines. There are outlines here, but they're not uniform thick outlines in a comic book, Muha, Art Nouveau, decal style. There's just enough for a poster illustration feel. So by the time I was finishing up the shirt, I had filmed four hours and I finished the baby's leg and the cushion off camera. And it was just more of the wet on dry 
DIY tiling. This is a lovely piece and master study to kick off the new year. Super satisfying to do a realistic gouache study with tiling as it's been a while since I did that. Well wizards, I hope you enjoyed seeing this little wizard come together. It is a sort of magic, isn't it? To make art. The illusion of creating forms on a flat page with just some hair and a stick and some powdered color and water. I hope you're inspired to do a line decker study or a gouache tiling piece of your own. Thanks for parking your brushes here. Please like, subscribe, and check out my website, links, and Patreon page to support my art channel. And until next time, wishing you all magical gouache adventures. Thank you.